And we're recording. Hey, Maya, how are you doing? Good, how are you? I'm doing okay. Um, you're in Tel Aviv. Let's, let's just jump in. What's the, what's the coronavirus situation like in Tel Aviv and in Israel? Can you, walk us, can you walk me through the past couple of weeks, basically? Um, okay, so I think officially we're in corona reality for the last nine days, right? Um, personally, I think I already saw it coming, and I think both a lot of people started stockpiling on a lot of stuff uh, early, but people didn't start working from home until about nine days ago when things deteriorated in Italy. And then really out of like from zero to one, it was stay at home, don't leave the house. And it took another 48 hours to close the schools. So and now we're waiting for the lockdown. Even didn't um, Israel close its borders very early on? I remember like a couple of weeks ago, fairly early, all the borders were closed. Is that, and even like, no. everyone had to leave? So no, no, not exactly. I, what happened was that Israel very early on said, hey, if you're coming in from China or from certain countries, and then Italy was added to that list, it, was, it started out as Asia, then you have to go into quarantine at home for 14 days. Um, and then it became very apparent that they're going to have to also uh, apply those rules to people coming in from the U.S. And then as a sort of compromise, they said, you know what, it's not going to be these, this country and this country, it's just going to be everyone. Um, and you, you really did see that I think up until Friday, most of the people who got corona were people who came in from abroad. And this was weeks ago, I think. Do you remember the date, more or less? Or oh, yeah. Um, two and a half weeks ago. This is like uh, beginning, like I think it literally, I think about the 2nd of March or something like that. Fairly early, yeah. Right. So, and now if you want to get into Israel or you're not Israeli, are you able to? Um, yes, in principle. Uh, sorry, in principle, no. In practice, yes. Um, just today, this morning, they got about 64. Um, Yeshiva students from Karen Heights, Brooklyn. Not all of them are Israelis and they let them in and they're in quarantine right now. All tested positive. What, they all tested positive? Wow, and they're in quarantine for two weeks. Yeah, they put We're them up in the hotel in the intercontinental here. Um, yeah. And if you were in Israel as a non-Israeli, were you allowed to stay? Because I remember something that non-Israelis even had to leave, but that might be, I might be misremembering that. Um, not that I recall. I did have uh, a family member that was visiting in, here from Holland, and he was allowed to stay indefinitely. It was more that the Israeli authorities saw that he, he was on a manifesto, and they said, hey, we're not sure this flight is going to leave. 24 hours, like he got a text like 24 hours before, and they said, uh, please confirm that you actually have a flight to leave. Otherwise, let us know. That was more or less the, the, the feeling. Right. Um, the big issue here was actually when they started in the last 10 days or so telling people stay at home, everyone flocked the beaches and the restaurants and the bars and people weren't listening. And then they went with the kids to the park. And it's like, People aren't cooperating, especially young people in Tel Aviv, so they keep on taking more serious measures. Right, and if we take a, what is the situation like for, uh, like how, do you know how many cases there are or how many hospitalizations or deaths or? Yeah, yes, I can even give you, hold on, the exact report from this morning. So we started this whole um, corona crisis with, there we go. Um, it's now it's even color coded since this morning, the new charts where the Israeli MOH took charge for this as a health crisis. And they were very cautious, very early to take action in the beginning, very communicative. Um, they have a telegram app, um, that I like, I get bulletins. This is how I can tell you exactly how many, there we go. This is from this morning. We have 129,000 people quarantined at home. 
Um, the total amount of people diagnosed with corona is 1,238. Out of that, 1,142 are in um, are, are slightly affected. 34 are hospitalized in a medium condition, and 24 are in uh, intensive care. Right. We that get was, a breakdown like that every morning and that every was, night. That was a huge number you just mentioned of people that are quarantined. What does it require to be quarantined? Stay home. Yeah, but why would you? Who is and is so, not allowed to go out, or when are what are what are the conditions? So right now, if you had come back into the country for the last, um, you have to quarantine for fourteen days. If you'd been in close contact with someone who was diagnosed with corona, you have to quarantine for fourteen days. If you went to a place that they know there was corona, you have to quarantine. So. For example, at the hospital, my brother's a doctor, so I know that, so like we got the, the entire detail of this story. One uh, intern was diagnosed with corona, so they had to close down two different hospital departments and put 60 doctors on quarantine for 14 days. So that's how you get into these numbers. And um, Israel decided Last Thursday, uh, wait, let me just maybe pause this and give you a bit of background about the Israeli politics because that has more to do with this than anything else. Um, this uh, current government was elected about five years ago. And for the last year and three months, we've been going to the elections yeah. and voting. So we've had three elections and the current prime minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, as the incumbent has failed to secure a vote. So right now he doesn't have the majority. The Knesset has to be sworn in. The Knesset is the Israeli parliament. And in this interim, he's decided that he's declaring emergency rule and he's going to start implementing anti-terror um, techniques in order to trace and track people who've been in contact with people with corona. Now, this is, I mean, this is the beginning of basically you've locked everyone home. You told people don't leave the house, don't congregate. You can't talk and we're tracking you everything you're doing. This is like a perfect um, opportunity for the Corona coup to happen. And this is, so this is happening in the midst of all the talks of what kind of laws apply, should the police be out and enforcing the curfew? Is, should there be a curfew? Yada, yada, yada. Yeah, and this tracking happens through GPS on phones, right? So again, this is like Israeli, um, trying to outsmart everyone and then only outsmarting themselves. So they start using the Sheen Bet uh, techniques, which is basically looking at location via the uh, uh, cell data. And this went into action on Saturday and there's already been like half a dozen people. So the premise is this, you're gonna get a tax and they tell you you've been in touch with a, uh, someone who's diagnosed with Corona and then you have to go home and quarantine yourself. That's officially the protocol, right? And on Saturday, about half a dozen people got um, this text when they were at home and they weren't in touch with anyone. Like someone crossed the street on the other side and they got a text. Um, in the meantime, the Ministry of uh, Health has um, launched a new app called Hamagin or The Protector that they've done, uh, a, they've built it with uh, an Israeli cyber company called Prospero. And what they do is essentially they save uh, uh, all your locations on your device and then they when someone is diagnosed they cross-reference it without sending your information to whoever it is and they've open sourced the uh, the code for that um, as well uh, which leads to the question hey if it's open source and you know they're not tracking everything then guys you have the perfect solution like Singapore for both surveillance and technological advances question is do you trust the current government not to use anti-terrorism and use this or is this or are these two you know parallel remedies one to make people like me shut up and the other one for the Shin Bet to, to gain more power over our lives yeah in, in Italy they're also using this uh, this GPS tracking system apparently and they check it they use it uh, to see if people actually stay at home do you, is that happening as well do you know that right yeah, so they do that. This is why they said they want to um, use surveillance. One, to make sure that people aren't violating the quarantine. 
um, I don't know if you remember, patient number 31 in South Korea is the one responsible for everything. And here in Israel, they also uh, found a couple of people who ran away. Um, but mostly the idea here is instead, right now they're only testing people who either came back from abroad or they're symptomatic and like they have more than 38 and a half, I think 39, right? Or respiratory problems. And so the thinking is, if you can get people to quarantine before they're symptomatic, like say T minus three or T minus four, then you're able to reduce the spread of the disease a lot faster, right? Even if people are just like staying at home and walking the dog. Um, so I understand why you would want an app like that. I just don't trust governments in general, and especially not when they refuses to seat their own parliament. Maybe it's me. What is the penalty if you if you break your quarantine or if they find through GPS tracking that you didn't stay at home? Um, right now, not a lot. That's kind of what the problem is. It's like 5,000 shekels, which is about um, 1,100 euros. Uh, I think only if you violated and went like something very drastic do you get, um, are you basically jailed? I it's also, not a very strong enforcement. The other thing I read is um, that they're in the process of banning cash in Israel, I think on buses or do you? Okay, so in terms of just going into um, non-contact payments, Israel has been significantly behind a lot of these efforts, right? There's nothing to compare us to Europe. We don't even have, uh, we only now started using a tap to pay. Um, let's see. I mean, I've been in several discussions, both with the Bank of Israel and with the, the security uh, authority regulators about using uh, digital cash. Hopefully this will accelerate it on one hand. On the other hand, I think the surveillance measures might also make us, wish that cash can stay around for a bit yeah so if you uh about these surveillance methods and the gps tracking can you explain what exactly what is your concern let me just put it straight like that my concern is that in the name in the name of security and health we're giving the government more and more um access to our digital lives and a way to both measure and lock people out of public goods, the public square and public services. And we might uh, bring in Big Brother just because we're scared. Um, that's my main concern. Specifically in Israel, I think that what's happening, well, what's happening across the world is in order to make sure that we can quarantine, you see more and more governments are, are um, end up quarantining and curfewing their people, right? It started with, with Italy and it looked drastic and then we went to Spain and France and now it's gonna be in New York and you're gonna have the National Guard and the military. So people start with the current quarantine and then they need a way to enforce it and then they need a way to get, um, governments need a way to get logistics to basically um, um, keep up with the demand of the population when everyone's at home and no one's working and then the military comes into play. So if in the middle of all this, you're, you're drastically uh, reframing and redefining the social contract about privacy, that's an issue. Then when you have a government that wasn't elected, like in Israel, coming in and saying, hey, we're gonna use anti-terror measures and saying, but you know what, we have a nice app for, your, for you open source people to kind of say, hey, we, we, we have your privacy in check. Um, that's a huge concern. And there are a lot of people talk, talking about what's happening in Israel as a coup. Um, no less. Is that how you think about it? I think there's a very slippery slope. And right now, um, the, the Supreme Court gave uh, the government a deadline, which is tomorrow. And they have to seat uh, gov the, the parliament and they have to reconvene um, an oversight committee about all these privacy concerns. Because right I'll now, with an emergency laws, we're basically saying, the government can decide what's right and no one can question it. And parliament doesn't get to ask any questions, right? So they appealed to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court said, okay, fine, you wanna, you wanna use these uh, technological means, but make sure someone's asking the right questions and it's not you. How are people in Israel 
responding to this. I, I, I've been to Israel a couple of times and I, I can imagine that maybe there's a big difference between Tel Aviv and the rest of Israel or... Yeah, you saw my smile. Um, Tel Aviv. First of all, telling Tel Avivis that they have to stay home and this isn't a reason to get, have a rooftop party is really, really difficult. Let's be honest. Like last weekend, there were still a bunch of parties going on and people did not um, stay home. Coffee shops are still open for takeaway, but people are sitting. Um, I think suburbia is much more disciplined in one hand. Uh, the big issue though is the Orthodox. Uh, the Orthodox are not listening. They had the chief rabbi come out and say that um, you're not allowed to go to the synagogue to pray and that people can even use Zoom maybe, uh, which is huge. I mean, you know, using technology in the Sabbath, that's a big deal. Uh, but they're still going to synagogue. And you see that of the new people with Corona, almost a third are religious. Hmm. What about the surveillance measures? I think also um, the rest of Israel is way more supportive of Netanyahu, for example. So is that also a difference you see? Sorry, what do you mean? I can imagine that in Tel Aviv, there's a lot of opposition against these new GPS tracking measures and that sort of stuff. Is this, how does the rest of the country feel about this? Do you have any idea? I can imagine yeah. some people so, would actually support it and ask for it or... It's not a question of supporting it or not supporting it. It's a question of the democracy. So there was like this, the people are much more rattled by the implications on our governance systems. So people on Saturday, sorry, on Friday, uh, got into the cars, put on a black flag and decided within their quarantine cars to storm parliament. And some of them got arrested. Uh, ironically, the guy they arrested is the head of the cyber um, department in the National Security Agency or whatever in Israel. Um, so this really does cross different um, different parts of society. That's much more of a concern than it, than it's a privacy issue. It's a governance issue here, right? Do you trust Bibi or do you trust democracy? Mm -hmm. um, that's one aspect. The other one, uh, which... I think is, is on top of everyone's mind is there's a lot of people that are going to go bankrupt and the Israeli government hasn't introduced a big stimulus, hasn't told people how they're going to make sure that they have enough money or that they're freezing um, mortgage payments or anything like that. I mean, I have friends that I know they're done. Their business is done. They've already fired people. Um, so that's rough. On the other hand, I, I know I have a friend who works at a startup that is doing really, really great. They're just bringing in business right now, right? They signed about $10 million in contract over the last week. What's a startup? Guess what? <laughs> Remote access for enterprise management. Right. So um, the big uh, Are you, what about the virus itself? Are you concerned about that? And do you have, do you think it's something that needs to be solved and like how would you solve it what's your what's your take on that part of the story so first of all i i see it breaking down into three parts you got the most immediate aspect which is people are getting sick and we need to make sure that healthcare infrastructure doesn't collapse on people right second is how do you make sure that uh, people can rejoin the workforce and revive the economy and make sure that it's stable and, 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 and build it enough that it's sustainable for the second wave of the virus that is probably coming. And uh, third, make sure that, and that's more long-term towards the fall, make sure that you have smarter techniques to contain it when, it, when, it, when, when we get the second wave, right? Um, and I think in the most immediate aspect, that's testing and scaling testing. And, in, in it, I was just writing to someone today. It's really interesting because Israel has always been on a crossroad between civilizations, Europe on one side, Asia on the other, right? And, uh, right now we see Israel, um, drowning in bureaucracy and red tape from the ministry of health. Um, I'm not sure they have the logistical know-how of, of how to scale and how to create a decentralized system to support all the testing and all the information and data. Um, but 
when you look at Asia and how they've managed to contain it, you see it's because of centralization. It's because of, of that they moved beyond regulation and implement, um, applied a lot of technology that wasn't um, necessarily approved and might not have been if, there, if we had like European regulations. So I think Israel, like literally right now is at that crossroad. Uh, where do we go? So we have three drive-throughs for testing, uh, one in Tel Aviv, one in Jerusalem, and one, um, one in the south. Um, the question is, do we go to serological testing or mini CT testing like in China? So you have a response within about uh, two hours. Now, if we, if we upgrade ourselves to serological testing, which is basically testing if someone ha already has the antibodies for corona, then you can let people return to the workforce. Um, so I think that's where the emphasis should be on the time being and building a supply chain, domestic supply chain. Yeah, yeah. so to, to limit your dependency on other countries is what you mean, China or whatever, any other country. Just for the basic stuff you need in a pandemic. Yeah. Right? Uh, Masks, know, syringes, swabs, uh, PPE. Yeah, you mentioned that Israel is on this crossroad between Europe and Asia. And I think the, the general difference between Europe and Asia right now is that in Europe, a lot of governments are saying, especially the Nordic governments are saying it out loud, that the plan is basically to just have everyone get the, get the virus, just not all at the same time. While in Asia, the strategy is to actually get the virus out of the country. And it, I get the impression that in Israel, at least, uh, they're trying to get the virus out of the country. Is that correct? Um, I, I, I wouldn't frame it that way. I frame it if it's containment or mitigation, right? Mm -hmm. And Europe and the U S are so, um, late to the game that they've, they, they've, they're left with no other option, but mitigation. And I think Israel right, right now, we've been early so far, but we have to decide, are we going to mitigate it? Or are we going to contain it? Um, are we going to create 3d printing for ventilators and make sure we have everything? Or are we going to scale up the test? Um, and, there, and a lot of this in Israel is also, again, politics. It's a fight between who's going to manage the situation, the Ministry of Health or the Minister of Defense. Do you want the army or do you want the medical staff? And when I say medical staff, it's not necessarily the medical staff. It's the, 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 chief, of the, the chief executive of the, of the Ministry of Health, who is also the guy who under budgeted all the, the warehouses for the supply that's missing. So again, it's a, it's very much a cover your ass approach on top of everything. Yeah. All right. To close off, do you want to end with a sort of prediction or what's your hope for the next couple of weeks or your expectation in Israel? Um, I hope we get a parliament seated. I hope there's oversight and someone's really asking the tough questions going forward and putting in like a Marshall plan for how, um, as a country, we can manage this a year and a half down the line, the coronavirus or other pandemics that come in. Um, and I hope that there's a stimulus or a plan to see how, um, how people can get back on their feet once they can leave the house. All right, is there anything else you wanna add before, before we shut no. down? Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay home. Yeah, stay you too. Home. Stay the fuck home. Yeah. All right. Thanks a lot. Thanks for your time, Maya. Thank you. Bye. Be safe, Aaron.